Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Tamiya's 1 to 48 scale F4B Phantom 2. An absolute beast of a kit this one. As you can see, the plastic is, is raring to go. It's almost jumping out of the box. I also have a couple of extras for this kit. Not all that I'm going to use, but this is a, a mammoth kit. So without any further ado, I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. A nice detail about this kit is Tamiya supplies you with a, a little information booklet as per se. Uh, it has a nice annotated diagram of all of the different parts of the Phantom, a couple of reference images. Unfortunately not in colour, but a very nice little thing to open the box to and have a little peruse over. So going on to the main kit, the first thing to do is fit a couple of panels which aren't already molded in. This includes the air to air refuelling probe bay. I'm personally opting not to display it um, in the refueling position, so closed. And then you also have to cement this to one half of, only one half of the fuselage, the other half is fully molded. It, it's a new tool Tamiya kit, of course there's not going to be any huge ridiculous issues here. There is one issue, but we'll cover that when we get to it. Uh, but the first couple of steps are literally just cementing panels onto the um, <laughs> onto the fuselage is very satisfying I must say but after you've got a multitude of panels cemented onto the both sides of the fuselage you can move on to the cockpit the cockpit assembly is very similar to uh, the F-16 and I believe the F-14 that Tamiya offer uh, the side control panels are offered as separate pieces which make it very easy for painting you can see me here just sliding them in there's no cement being used here as they will be all painted together then later removed and detail painted all of these parts of the cockpit slide together and slip together you probably wouldn't even need glue if you didn't need to um, a couple of sub assemblies here i didn't film them but um i'm sure that you know there's several phantom videos on youtube so i i imagine most people are familiar with the general construction of this kit so after giving both sides of the fuselage a medium c gray i then went on to highlight a couple of the raised features in a much lighter gray almost a white but i believe this is a very very light gold gray uh, this just gives a little bit more of a 3D effect, however I wouldn't bother doing this as you can barely see it in the finished product. I then went on to remove the panels as I said you could do earlier and then detail painted the black onto this. I don't actually believe Tamiya supplies a decal for this so hand painting might be your only option but I could be wrong there. To detail paint you can see I've got my magnifying glasses on in the top left of the screen and I'm just very very slowly picking out a couple of the details initially in white then I'll move on to other colours such as silver in this clip and then also um, reds and one or two yellows. I didn't use any reference images for this as I really... I, I did not have the time for that, <laughs> you know, otherwise I would have been there all week. But I think the overall effect is rather believable and I was very happy with the result. These can then be slotted back in with the rest of the sub-assembly and look, look at that, brilliant. Uh, I must say Tamiya is, um, Tamiya's detail, raised detail on these control panels does make them much easier to paint uh, compared to some other manufacturers which maybe only supply a couple of quite soft details i'm not going to name names of course but i'm sure you know or you know of a couple of manufacturers that have slightly softer cockpit details so as you can see i've pretty much now have to reassemble the entirety of the cockpit after everything was all kind of pulled out to do the detail painting once this is all together i'm going to give it firstly a gloss varnish to protect all of my detail work then an oil wash as you can see on screen this just gives it a bit more of a grotty effect and as you'll see my phantom is going to be grotty in every single blooming aspect so with the majority of the cockpit work done i moved on to the nose wheel bay this has oodles of detail possibly the most detailed um like out of the box nose wheel bay i've personally ever seen i'm sure there's there could be a couple better out there but it is uh, the the best balance i'd say of detail and also simplicity to uh, construct as it only is made up of about five pieces and you know that is 
if anyone wanted to do more super detailing on that i feel like it would just be a waste of time like it, it, it looks brilliant when it's all painted up this um nose wheel uh, nose gear bay assembly is then also joined with the cockpit tub really nice a couple of location pins to do that the final couple of steps for the cockpit is to insert this uh, front control panel or instrument panel i apologize uh, that was fitted using the kit supply decal as i definitely couldn't paint those sort of details so moving on to the exhaust section of the kit they were first given uh, ammo's one shot primer and then coated in green this was followed for a couple of the other aspects of the engine which are going to be fitted to it and there was no real special painting technique here it was just um, a general flat coat uh, interestingly enough uh, you actually have to get rid of and cut off these two pieces of one or the I, I believe it's the bottom half of the exhaust otherwise they won't fit together uh, correctly I found this quite interesting I mean it wasn't a hassle but very very um it's always nerve-wracking you know hacking into a kit I have no clue how plasmo does it uh, anyway these go together if you do it correctly with um you know brilliant fit you can barely even see the seam line on the latter half and then you saw those two engine sub assemblies which i was building up these then get slotted into place if you are building this kit and you fancy to do some more detail in this sort of section i am um, <laughs> i wouldn't recommend it purely because when the final model is finished the angle of uh, the hot uh, the hot section and the air intakes and everything no not the air intake sorry the exhaust that they're pointing in such direction that you can barely ever see inside there again so um yeah i i wouldn't stress too much about that but this sub assembly or both both sub assemblies sorry are slotted into the fuselage uh, with some lovely big uh, location points and location pins and the instructions are very clear as well so i'm sure you'll be absolutely fine and then it is time to cement the two fuselage halves together um there's no proper issues here there there is definitely maybe a little bit of warping um but it's, it's more like just general warping like you're gonna have it in every kit but if you just hold it there maybe with a bit of tape you'll be absolutely fine i'm then going to move on to building up a bit of the main gear bays these have a almost it was brilliant it was almost like blooming origami everything was like folding and fitting into place um with absolute ease really fun to build up this part of the uh, build as it, it just as i said slots together these um are then all going to be coated in insignia white and also it is very very important to remember to actually paint this half or this part of the uh, uh component in metallic as you, you think that you're not going to see it however there is a panel which is open and you will be able to see a tiny bit of it i'm sure you'll see it in the final photos this sub-assembly, after being all painted up, can then be cemented onto the bottom half of the wings. Uh, once again, you know, lovely location marks, so you're not going to get lost or confused in this part of the build. So, a uh, pretty good thing to note is to remember, when you're fitting the top halves of the um, wing, make sure to paint uh, a bit of it in the insignia white, as this part actually does make up. Uh, an element of the uh, gear bay the top half of the gear bay so just you know just save yourself a bit of masking later on in the build and paint it beforehand there are a couple more panels which have to be fitted this part is moving onto the hot section and with those one or two panels fitted you can see one of the best wing joint to fuselage to wing joints i've ever seen it is, it is very impressive with only one or two pieces of masking tape needed to create um, a fit that I was happy with. I, I, I thought it was an, an, a very impressive bit of engineering there from Tamiya. Um, I then let this dry just for a little while just to make sure that I, I wasn't going to allow the plastic to warp a little bit. Uh, but then I moved on to fitting a couple more of the panels. Interestingly, I think this might have been my fault, um, but the top half here, had to, I had to use a little bit of filler just to fill a, a gap, which I thought was a bit too big for the scale. Uh, this could, however, have been me uh, being a bit lazy in the cleanup area and maybe slicing a bit too much of the plastic. So you might not run into this issue, but if you do, it is a very simple fix using some Vallejo um, 
putty which is water soluble so all we need to do is you know plaster it on there and then get a slightly dampened cotton bud and wipe the excess off moving on to the air intakes these once again really nice system here i couldn't even see a seam line as they very cleverly were placed on um, almost the 90 degree angles of the air intake uh, there is then also another bit of the uh, like the turbo fan which has to be uh, slotted on the end which has lovely um, orientated location uh, tabs so once again you're not going to run into any issues here. The forward parts of the air intakes you have to be very careful and think a couple of steps forward here what parts you're going to be painting. Uh, so as you can see on screen I've already painted this piece before I start to uh, assemble it which is very unlike me if you've watched the channel before you know I like to um, you know put everything together and then paint however when it comes to this phantom there's a lot of interesting angles on the on the phantom which pretty much means some places are incredibly hard to be painted uh, unless they're painted before they're stuck onto the fuselage um so just think a couple of steps ahead here uh think where it's going to be easily accessible maybe dry fit put it onto the actual um fuselage see if you could probably paint it uh, and then if not remove it uh, paint it and then put it back on so hopefully that helps you and saves you a bit of a headache um and then anyway moving back to the build these were all masked off and then fitted uh, dry fitted quickly back onto the um, fuselage so there's no glue being used here this just uh, allows it to be removable as i would have a little bit of an issue getting rid of some of the masking tape afterwards so panels 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 there are so many panels that have to be fitted on this kit luckily they all go together seamlessly pun was intended um, but this is for part of the tail section there is a very nice system which allows you to capture the very unique angle of the horizontal stabilizer that the phantom has uh, with with ease it makes it you know sometimes you'd have them molded in individual pieces and it would be rather hard to uh, get matching angles on both sides of the wing but as it's molded as a single part you don't have this issue so as you can see the Tamiya poly caps are also used in this kit uh, they are utilized for the horizontal stabilizer they go together you know with, with ease there's no <laughs> the general thing for this kit is is Tamiya quality the actual building aspect of it doesn't have too many issues but there is one one or two which i'll get into later however that could be individual to me uh, moving back on to the build, uh, a lot of this uh, section and the hot section is not cemented on and you'll see for good reason when I get to the painting stage of the kit. Uh, but it's, it's brilliant that the, the fit allows you not to use cement and have everything stick together. It just it will make it a lot easier when painting this kit. So a few more uh, aspects that have to be fitted to the kit, one being the front nose cone. Uh, brilliant fit again it can be held there by friction I don't think I even used glue to finally cement it in place there's also um, a pod that has to be fitted on the chin let's just say of the nose um, be very careful make sure you look at the instruction and refer to which uh, marking scheme you're going to be using as they differ per scheme Tamiya does give you the option to display this model with the wings up uh, or the wings semi down as they're not completely down are they on the Phantom. Uh, I opted to have them semi down and uh, the angle can be captured like the iconic Phantom angled wing tips uh, is very easily captured using a, a, a well thought out system by Tamiya as you can see that I am showing it off. So I think it's a good thing to note that um, I have heard from other people who have built this kit that if you want to display the wingtips in the upright position, you could have a couple of issues there. Albeit, that's just what I heard, but I thought it would be better to pre-warn you, um, but I have no personal experience on it. Moving on to making a couple of the flaperons, these have also the ability to be displayed up or down. I personally went for down just to add a little bit of visual interest to the model. If you're doing it, um, whatever version you're doing, sorry, it depends on the piece that you fit in the middle uh, as this determines the angle of the flaperon. So once again, nice little system. You also have the ability to display the air brakes uh, open or closed. I went closed as I didn't really want to 
you know have them painted um, when they're open and stuff uh, but yeah so moving on um, he could see me using the Edward canopy mask I think that is a uh, you know almost a necessity however it is good to note that um tamia does to supply a mask set in the kit however it's not pre-cut so you would have to cut it out yourself um i'm sure it would be fine to use but you know i just had this so i thought i'd use it um i also used uh, some mig uh masking fluid i believe is called uh, on the canopy i've used this a couple of times now i do really like it i must say and look i didn't do what i did in my me262 video i actually used some masking tape around the edges so they'll be nice and crisp so moving on to the painting process i gave the entire model a coat of ammo's one shot primer and then i'm going to use an assortment of colors on this kit to be mottled on uh, yeah, I am using mottling. I haven't used the actual mottling process for quite a while now. However, if you don't know how it works, pretty much what it is, is you spray at a relatively low uh, PSI, maybe in the region of 20 to 25 PSI. That's pretty low for me. Um, you then mottle and like do these random squiggles onto each of the panels. As you can see, it kind of de de French rates each panel. What this then does is when you spray your top color on top, uh, the, the different tones underneath, as you can see, I used a couple of browns as well, will just present um, a variety of tones on the top coat of the paint, just creating a more sort of weathered and more visually interesting and, in my opinion, a more realistic um, illustration of the model. So moving on to the actual painting process, I'm using on the top ammo MIGs light gold grey and on the underside of the model uh, Vallejo's Insignia White. Vallejo's Insignia White is probably my favourite colour to spray, a uh, white sorry, not favourite colour, favourite white to spray with. I think it features excellent opacity and always leaves me with a very nice smooth finish. When it comes to the actual painting of the gold grey that you can see in this clip, I have a couple of steps which I personally like to follow and I recommend you try them at least once to see if you like it. So pretty much all of these layers have to go down very thinly to make sure that you preserve the model effect enough to, to create the tonal variations but it's also a very fine line of underdoing it and overdoing it. If you overdo your model effect there's no way of getting it back unless you want to completely start over. Um, so what I recommend you do is you do smaller sections and very really light coats and every so often just stop, get your model, bring it to some different lighting, take a few steps back, look at it from different angles, see how you personally feel about the model. Okay, don't try and take photos of it and send it to, um, <laughs> to your friends just because, you know, cameras are brilliant but they they don't they can't capture all of these tonal variations you know it has to be from you and you have to make the decision when you want it to stop or when you want to carry on so i would just say take your few steps back have a little evaluation do you like it do you want to go some more um and do it with that if anything i'd say maybe possibly overdo it rather than underdo it just as you can bring back some tonal variation through oils and i'll show you how to do that later in the video so um, I then repeat this entire process on the underside of the fuselage, but this time in my insignia white. Um, for spraying, I, as I said earlier, I model at about 20 to 25 psi. However, for general spraying, I'll actually spray at around 30ish psi. There's a lot of playing around that you can do with PSIs. Uh, so as you can see now, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting a couple of panels on the light gold gray and white. This is just to try and create a sort of, um, you know, faded effect on a couple of the panels. Uh, and this, this is when I change my PSI back down. So generally, if you're going to be spraying a higher, uh, like larger areas, you want to go for a, sli a slightly higher PSI around the 30-ish mark and if you're doing more detail work you want to drop that down there's definitely a lot of testing involved and you know experimenting to see where you personally like to operate you know i can give you values but it's better for you to just kind of experiment for yourself and see what you enjoy after this uh, sort of faded effect was uh, created i then mottled in a couple of panels with uh, white but did this very very lightly 
I then masked off the flapperons and flaps and flap ailerons, whatever, whatever they're called, and then they were painted in actually a very flat coat of white. I did this just to um, because gold grey is also quite a, a very light color uh, so to distinguish the difference i thought it would be better to leave out any mottling and just go for a straight basic white color and this actually worked very well uh, some more masking was then involved in um, doing some red wing tips. These uh, were just, th these aren't on every Phantom. This is just very um, singular to my scheme. Uh, I'm sure there are probably decals for them. However, when you're doing a simple sort of shape like this, it is better to just mask them off. I think I used um, Mr. Hobby's, I think it was called Ferrari Red actually, which was quite amusing. So after all of that painting, I was actually very happy to get back on some sub-assemblies. Here you can see me putting together the exhaust cans for this kit, and in my opinion, they are incredible. Uh, for kit supplied parts, it, it, the, the detail and the way that they are put together is just brilliant. So here you can see why I left these pieces uh, un uncemented. Uh, it just allows me to get a much better angle at the hot section, uh, for painting uh, because of course the tail isn't in the way when it comes to painting the hot section of the phantom I'm going to be using this uh, furball exterior mask set uh, but however if you are going to be using a mask set of any type make sure you put a gloss coat down before you do this and you will see why in a second and then as you can see I whipped out almost every single uh, color I had uh, metallic color sorry I have in my collection to try and do this hot section my initial plan was to um, firstly put down this coat of aluminium um, just because I, I thought it was quite a good match. This was put on the exhaust cans uh, along with the entirety of the hot section. And then the, the plan was to then go and use the other metallic colours to differentiate a couple of the panels just because looking at reference images, that is what it looked like. So I used a burnt iron colour, a steel colour, um, gun metal color and a couple of other colors however when I peeled it off it just looked too too stark of a difference so then what I instead did was once that was finished um, and dried I then went back over the top with another coat of uh, AK's extreme metal color purely and that and this blended them all together and made it look in my opinion much more realistic I then repeated this uh, process however doing more of a gradient sort of effect using flat black um, on the upper surfaces of the hot section as when I looked at reference images this is what I could see <laughs> um, so once again you know I put down the black let that dry and then went back over the top with AK's aluminium uh, I think it's, it's a, it was definitely a bit of trial and error here as this is my first ever phantom and my first ever hot section on a phantom oh there we go nearly got rid of the model there however this is going to be my first of probably quite a few phantoms and as you can see this is my advertisement for gloss coats as i ripped off um a huge chunk of the paint and this this was all over the uh, the hot section so the way that I rectified this was initially reprimed, remodeled, and then redid the whole process. It's not too hard to uh, fix these sort of things, but it definitely is a bit of a headache to sort out. So just make sure that you use gloss coats if you're ever going to be using vinyl masks or any masks for that reason. This is probably the second or third time this has happened to me in my previous videos, so I, I am not learning. <laughs> Going back to... Uh, me talking about how many phantoms i'm gonna do i do have a meng phantom lined up as a future build so i hope it'll be quite interesting to see the difference between the two manufacturers so the whole process was then repeated on the horizontal stabilizers and then it was time to move on to the exhaust cans so looking at some reference images of the phantoms exhaust cans they seem to have uh, a darker region and a lighter region of metals to replicate this probably not <laughs> the best uh, idea from me but I, I pretty much would put a layer down of black uh, in the in the section and then very quickly wipe it off um, it was quite an effective technique and actually quite quick to do 
and you know it it wasn't going to be seen after what I'm about to do to them so I then mixed up some orangey yellowy sort of oil wash and a couple of browns couple of whites in there as well uh, mix them all together to give this sort of rusted effect as that is what I saw on a couple of phantom images uh, here you can see what I do is I just dot a couple of them down and then I'll get my, my little dirty rag that I use for um, you know cleaning brushes and airbrushes and then kind of streak it outwards. This gave her quite a nice rusted effect um, and I, I was actually really quite proud of this. I thought it looked pretty darn good. And there you can see the difference between the initial uh, one uh, and afterwards. Moving on to doing some more interesting techniques, I'm going to be using Ammo Mix uh, masking fluid to pretty much um, different uh, sort of, I don't really know how to explain it, but you look at a couple of images of the phantoms and on the underside, like the internals of the panel is like a clean metal and then the external is more of a sort of yellowy color um why this is i'm not too sure but to replicate this i pretty much did these patterns and then uh sprayed over some clear yellowy smoke color uh from tamia and then i rubbed it all off and as you can see pretty cool effect isn't it um how accurate it is i'm not too sure but anyway it looks quite cool so i thought I'm, <laughs> i might as well keep it i then did a similar process of you know using a couple of different metallic colors to show a few tones on the tail i then mounted this back on and the entire hot section was then complete the final step to do was then just to put the uh, exhaust cans into place these actually do have some um, sort of tabs which have to be matched up, uh, otherwise they won't go in properly, but once you find them, you'll be absolutely fine. I do recommend wearing some gloves for this step purely because um, they're actually quite pointy at the end of the cap and I, I kept on scraping a bit of skin off my finger so maybe wear a glove uh, but there was the final section and look you know earlier if you remember I said that you would see a bit of that section that is the panel that goes onto it anyway moving into the final few stages now before decals it was just a couple of sub assemblies being the the gear the tail and uh, a couple of the gear bay doors and everything these all go together very nicely the gear have some quite good um you know quite sturdy location marks however i did actually manage to snap these off uh off of the main gear bay one of them I believe was due to someone infiltrating my workspace and accidentally leaning a bit on the model which made it collapse. However, when I was actually trying to film the final reveal of this kit, they um, I, I managed to snap them um, just by placing it down which I, I found quite interesting and it wasn't the one which it was already broken, it was the other one. So maybe these do have a slight bit of weakness in them. Moving on to decals, uh, if you follow my Instagram, you know that I had an absolutely awful um, experience with the decals that Tamiya supplied, so I ended up using the Edward ones. I had to get these from Germany, so that's why this video has come out a bit late. It was meant to come out about a month ago. All of these decals went down relatively okay, however, I was not aware that they were the new ones and that they had the peelable film on them. So pretty much a couple of them, when I started to peel the fil film off, it started to rip a couple of the decals. So if you, you'll see a load of rips probably in the final uh, <laughs> final images. However, I'm going to say that that is because of how incredibly used this aircraft was. To tie in with my theme of uh, <laughs> a bit of a workhorse, I was using a couple of panel washers here. So for the front section and the anti-glare uh, sort of panel, I had to use a white to differentiate the panels. However, on the main fuselage, I used just Ammo Mix uh, dark wash. To make the um, anti-slip sort of step pads place I don't think that's its technical name but it will do for me uh, I used a white and blended it in just to create almost a faded effect this was then layered up using also sepia and a couple of brown oil paints 
So moving on to the general process of what I did for the weathering and to create this incredibly faded effect, I had an image up on my computer of this exact aircraft um, pretty much in a dive dropping bombs and looking at it, a load of these sort of panels uh, seem to be very dirty and mucky. I'll see if I can get it up on the screen now. Um, and to do this, what I would do is I would get a not almost diluted with white spirit, but um, still relatively oil paint like um, a sort of mixture of I believe this is burnt umber. I would trace it along and then I would use my blending brush and almost, you know, stipple it and press it in to the panel areas. I would then get my um, slightly dampened in white spirit uh, piece of toilet paper and you know dab 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 all along just to make it disperse a bit then to clean it up and make it a little little more uniform i used a clean brush with white spirit and then this pretty much just gets rid of any of the area this process uh, is kind of, is repeated along the entirety of the aircraft but yeah you know varying the colors and i went for a couple of not not blacks but closer to black colors and more lighter brown colors in other areas and then for the actual wings I used a, a sort of dot filter technique what you do here is you put the dots down of the oil paint as you can see and then stipple them in and the, the effect that it gives is actually really quite convincing I then added a couple of streaks as you can see on the wings from the fuel ports and then I said that was pretty much done all these processes were repeated in the exact same way on the bottom, so I thought there was no real need to film it. Speaking of these processes being uh, repeated, they were also done on the one fuel tank that I had fitted to this aircraft. Here you can see it. Uh, then as you saw, I, I showed off VMS's um, matte varnish. That is what I used to seal in all of my hard oil work. Um, and. I, I love the VMS ranges of varnishes purely because they're pre-thinned, you know, it makes it so much nicer to use a pre-thinned wash, but maybe that's because I'm lazy. Uh, the final for the sort of stages for this kit were just to be putting in a couple of the ejection seats. I didn't film these uh, purely because they, they weren't the most detailed things and they weren't the most interesting to paint. Uh, the dashboard, <laughs> I don't think it's called a dashboard, but we'll call it a dashboard, is fitted along with this top piece here. Um, this piece only goes in if the piece to the rear fuselage, as I said not to fit earlier, isn't fitted. The canopy was then fitted. Um, it did take a little bit of wiggling around, um, but you know, <laughs> just take your time and you'll get there. So with the canopy of this kit on, that is the video complete. Uh, before I go on to the final photos, I just have a small thing to say about this kit. Uh, and that is the general build quality and the, the, the general building process is incredible. You know, I absolutely loved building this kit. However, I think decals just need to be sorted out now by Tamiya. Um, and that isn't just me saying this. This is um, a general sort of uh, view from most people who have built this kit that the decals are incredibly hard to get down. I personally couldn't get them down, which led to me having to go to you know, Germany to get some Edward. De I didn't personally go to Germany, but I had to get them from a German seller to get the Edward decals to finish this model kit. And if you're going to that much effort for a kit which already costs £90, it's it's hard. It's hard to justify, isn't it? Um, you know, spending that much money on a kit which can't even provide adequate decals, which should be, in my opinion, quite an easy thing to provide. Um, even if that meant they would have to outsource their decal manufacturing to an external company like Protograph. So... I just thought it would be better to actually mention that uh, in case you are wondering about getting this kit, you know, just be prepared for that. Uh, but now, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to give my voice a rest because if you haven't already heard, it is down in the dumps today. Uh, enjoy the final photos and I will see you very, very soon. Have a good one, guys. Bye bye.